Hey everyone, Daniel here from Golden Rovers. Welcome to the first episode of our full Discovery 2 LSWAP instructional video series. This series will be a complete bolt by bolt, wire by wire walkthrough of swapping an LS into this 2004 Discovery 2 using the Golden Rovers kit. It is meant to be a companion video series to the written instructions which are linked in the description. So, Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's kick off the most detailed LS swap guide on YouTube ever. So what does it mean to LS swap? It means removing the stock Rover V8 and putting a GM LS series engine, which is one of the most popular and well-supported engine families out there. These engines are powerful, super reliable, and super simple. There's tons of aftermarket support for parts and for troubleshooting. So compared to the old Rover V8, even the stock LS is a considerable improvement in power, drivability, fuel efficiency, but more importantly, it's a major reliability upgrade. If you need parts, they are readily available and affordable. The Golden Rovers kit we're using is designed to make the LS swap as fast and pain-free as possible. It lets you keep the factory ZF transmission in most of the Discovery's original components. So the truck runs and behaves like it should, but better. You still have all the gauges, traction control working when you're done. The goal here is that you shouldn't need a lot of experience or a lot of time to finish the project. With this kit, most weekend warriors can finish the swap in two or three months over the weekends. And when it's done, it's actually done. So what do you need to tackle this? You'll want basic gear like ratchets and wrenches, a torque wrench, an engine hoist or crane, optionally an engine stand is nice to have. You'll need some power tools like an angle grinder and a die grinder or Dremel. Having experience with engine swaps will help of course, but it's not required. If it's your first time, follow this video series closely. As long as you're eager to learn and you believe you can do it, then you can do it. No welding is required for the swap, except to adapt the exhaust manifolds to the exhaust pipes, but a muffler shop could do that for you. Let's jump into engine selection. What we call LS is actually a family of GM engines that span multiple generations, multiple categories. There's Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5. There are car LS engines from Corvettes, Camaros, and there are truck LS engines from Chevy Silverados, Suburbans, Tahoe, Yukon, etc. Most of them don't even have LS in the model name. These engines were very modular, so there's lots of cross compatibility between generations and between car and truck models, but there are still some differences. So, which one do you pick? I've narrowed it down for you. The Golden Rovers kit officially supports Generation 3, 4.8 liter and 5.3 liter truck LS engine also known as Vortec 4800 and Vortec 5300. These engines are powerful, high torque, dead simple, cheap, and super common. The 5.3 liter is a good power upgrade without requiring you to upgrade your transmission internals or drivetrain. Generation 3 also has the advantage that you can configure it as drive by cable meaning you can use the same gas pedal and throttle cable from your Discovery, which saves you a lot of time. So that narrows down the list of officially supported engines to the LM7, LM4, L33, L59, and LR4. These engines came in GM trucks between 1999 and 2006. On the instructions page, I have a detailed comparison of these engines. In a nutshell, the LM7 is the most common and most affordable iron block version. The LM4 is basically the same, except it's an aluminum block, which makes it 80 pounds lighter. The L59 is the same as the LM7, but it came with flex fuel compatible injectors. The L33 is an aluminum block like the LM4, but it's been refined to make a little bit more output, a little more power. And finally, the LR4 is the 4.8 liter version of the LM7. It's also an iron block. So it has a little less displacement, a little less power, but it can rev higher, 
it also can be very cheap to buy and they will go easier on your discovery drive train. So how do you buy one? Well, used engines are the most economical way by far. You can find great deals on Facebook Marketplace, carpart.com, eBay, your local junkyard. You can even buy full donor vehicles with running engines. For about $800, you can buy an LM7 with everything attached to it, including the wiring harness and drive-by-cable PCM, if you choose correctly. So I thought I would show you a little bit of shopping for used engines. I just popped open Facebook Marketplace, and it already knows me, so suggesting this uh, for $600, a 4.8 iron block LS um, out of a 2002 1500 Chevy. That's, that's, that would work perfectly. Uh, looks like it had 200,000 miles on it. And um, because this is 2002, it has the drive-by cable throttle body. I can see it there already. So this would work as is, and it comes with a lot of the parts we need, right? Um, injectors, coils, intake manifold, bunch of stuff, right? So that means we don't have to go and buy that. Let's try uh, carpart.com. Let's say I was in the market for an LM4, which is uh, the lighter aluminum block. That came in like 2003, 2004, which Chevy Trailblazer, I think. Does it have to be EXT? 5.3. So there you go, uh, engine assembly, Trailblazer EXT, 2003, so 5.3, West Coast Auto Wrecking. So yeah, there's there's options, there's ways to get junkyard engines. This is one way. And there's probably other ways to shop for a used engine that I'm not even aware of. Now, if you are buying a used engine, there's a number of things you might want to keep to get the most bang for your buck. You could keep the alternator, the coils, injectors, fuel rail, intake manifold, throttle body if it's drive by cable, all the sensors including the mass airflow, the PCM, which is the computer, if it's a red blue drive by cable. You might want the catalytic converters if you have to pass very strict smog testing in your state that requires the original catalytic converters from the donor vehicle. There's also a lot of things you do not need to keep. Uh, don't bother taking the AC compressor because we will use the Rover one. So you don't have to deal with any refrigerant. You don't need to keep the power steering pump, although it probably comes attached to the engine, so whatever, because we are going to buy a Corvette one. You don't need any idler pulleys or serpentine belts because the kit provides new ones. Uh, you don't need a starter. We provide a new one. Exhaust manifolds, you're going to have to buy some low profile ones. Oil pan, you're going to have to buy a low profile one. We have a list of specific aftermarket parts you need to buy, which are in the written instructions. I also recommend getting a new water pump, new knock sensors and wires, new spark plugs and wires, of course. Um, and I do recommend a, uh, getting a new custom made wiring harness. Um, but you could reuse the old wires if you are really strapped for cash. Another option, crate engines like this one. That sounds expensive, but for really just $3,000, you can get a fully rebuilt LM7 like this one with all new tin tinware and all new gaskets included. Delivered to your door in six or seven days. So that's what I have here. I purchased this LM7 from Jegs. It came like this, fully assembled with a box full of gaskets. They even delivered it to my pickup truck so I could drive it around to the shop. That was the most convenient option by far. It definitely costs more to go down this road with the crate engine, because once you buy all the sensors brand new and ancillary parts, you're looking at about $4,500. Um, and you can look at my spreadsheets in the instructions manual for details there. But um, for my previous LS swap, I did buy a used engine and um, I ended up spending about two grand refreshing all the gaskets and sensors, not even doing a full rebuild, just gaskets and sensors. And I figured, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well spend that money on a fully rebuilt engine that already has all the gaskets too, which is nice. So shopping for a crate engine, it's really convenient. You just go over to jags.com or you can go to Summit Racing. Um, and uh, well, in the case of Jags, if I just search LM7, 
Um, well, uh, you get a bunch of results. You have to be careful here because uh, a lot of these are high horsepower engines. Um, so that would mean too much for our uh, transmission to handle. So we want to look for a stock engine. So I'm going to filter engines. An easy way is to sort by price low to high. And here we go. So um, $2,000. We manufactured LM7. Um, that's the iron block. And uh, it comes with everything except no front cover. So you have to get your own front cover and gaskets. No valve covers. No oil pan, but that's okay because we are going to buy our own low profile oil pan. And no valley cover. So you're going to have to buy one of those. So um, this is a great value and definitely um, a good way to go. Uh, I actually, I don't think this option was available when I was shopping. So I actually went with the second option here. There's a four wheel drive and a two wheel drive version. They are, these two, they're actually the same. I think the four wheel drive versus two wheel drive, it, the oil pan is different, but it doesn't matter because we're going to change it. So I got one of these. It's the same, except it does come with a front cover and a valley cover. And, um... Uh, valve covers as well um, and an oil pan although we're not going to use it so it cost about three grand um, it was delivered to my door in six days so super convenient um, so there you go so that's the that's if you want to buy an lm7 iron block well let's say you want the lm4 which is the aluminum block you want to save some weight you can get one of those too there's a, I think there's a few less options. Yeah, there's only one option. 31, 51. Um, no front cover, no valve cover, so you have to get those. Um, and valley cover. But yeah, still still a great deal. And if uh, saving the weight is important to you, then you can definitely do that. If you want the aluminum block with the high output, a little bit more power, you can search for the L33. The L33 is here as well. Um, I think these make maybe 15 more horsepower, something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, if you get one of these, well, make sure you um, buy all the parts that go with an L33. I don't know if there may be some differences between the L33 and the LM4. So make sure you, when you shop for parts, use one of these reference vehicles here. So yeah, um, 3300, you can get an L33 which is a fantastic choice. In Summit Racing, it's kind of the same. I think if you search LM7, I think I had a little bit more trouble finding it, but they're, they're there. So that concludes this first introduction video. In the next one, we are going to go over all of those additional parts I mentioned that we need to purchase, and we will install them on this LM7. So stay tuned, and thank you for watching.